Right, okay, Maui, what is your good point? Uh, this is just, this is the best. This is the best move ever. This is uh, Cloud9 finally pulling the plug on the, the Naphne tirade that has just been tormenting Cloud9 for as long as it's been going on. Like, I have been so critical of him being the in-game leader for so long, and it's so rare as an analyst to be this damn right. And, like, I know I'm this right because Cloud9 are finally giving up on this project to have Naphne as an in-game leader. They're bringing in Electronic, they're still keeping Hobbit, thankfully, and then they're obviously removing Buster for Perfecto. And I just think this is the biggest upgrade you could have possibly done if you are Cloud9. Now you have a rifler in-game leader who still to this day frags out wall calling. You have one of the best riflers in the world as Axel. You have a top five sniper in the world with Shiro. You still have Hobbit, who's just that veteran presence who has really kind of fallen off. And I would say it's kind of because of the system a little bit. But in terms of individual play, I've never really been that that hard on Hobbit, even during his kind of downward periods where he's been in the red for a, for a couple of events here and there. But I would also usually attribute that to the calling style. And then also the fact that you're getting perfecto for Buster because Buster was just, he was, he was so negligible on this team. Like he was, we all knew, we all knew going into it, it was never going to fix anything to bring Buster in. I don't think a single analyst had an, a differing opinion from that like i don't think anybody's once any single person saw buster after a tournament two tournaments three tournaments and was like he's getting it he's get he's getting his his groove for this team like no that's not <clears throat> and that's not even a pun with the coach there and <clears throat> if if i actually had to go a step further though i would change the coach out too i would change groove up groove out with this one because if groove is hand in hand responsible with Naphne for putting together that system for Cloud9, just throw them out too. Like, I don't want to see anything else to do with that. I'd rather see Electronic bring what he learned with Navi, with Blade. I'd rather see him try to work with a new coach entirely. There's plenty of uh, like, like coaches also in Eastern Europe, like say you bring in someone like Hooch, someone that's very pragmatic with his pr approach. I would grab somebody like that, but still the fact that they, were able to rid themselves of Naphne, rid themselves of Buster, and bring in Electronic and Perfecto. This has got to be the best roster move for me in this transfer window. Okay. Where are you at on this, King T? Yeah. Well, yeah. We saw this this come through, like the news. Everyone was like, rejoice. We all know Maui's vindicated. Like, finally, they follow suit and actually gone and made this move. I do think, though, that the point about Groove, he managed to duck heat for so much so much time like we were always talking about the system being the problem if your coach isn't in some way responsible for that what is he doing like i always thought it was weird how we managed to escape like the ire essentially of the community in that sense um if he stays here and develops something new with with uh electronic and it works great but i agree if he's a part of the problem if he's trying to keep this sort of style of play going yeah cut him immediately uh, that was one of the biggest issues was the system and the system has to be built by two people. It's always the tandem that makes it. And so I was always wondering why we didn't really hear so much about him essentially being replaced, taking a little bit of that shit that Naphne took for so many years. Um, at this point, though, I'm most excited about the Perfecto upgrade. I feel like Buster, as you said, didn't move the needle, didn't change a whole lot. And Perfecto not only is a really good sport, he's the best at playing these sorts of roles and positions. We, we know it. Statistically, we've got the eye test. This makes the team a whole lot more dangerous. And alongside these star players, I expect Cloud9 sure, to have like a one or two month adjustment period, but then immediately go into contention. There's no way you have this much firepower and screw it up, except if you're still coaching them in the same way they were playing before. That's the only problem I can see them having is somehow they're still playing that crappy system, then they won't have good T-sides. But hell, I could see this team smash people out 15-0 if they get rolling, just on CT sides alone. So yeah, I'm very high on this. We've been waiting for it for so long. When the first rumors came out that they weren't cutting Naphne, you know, the initial leak was that it was Hobbit and Buster cut. Yeah. I was a bit like, yeah, I mean, I guess they're better players, but it's nowhere near as exciting as if you're cutting Naphne. Cutting Naphne is, well, that's really removing the tumor. That's the <coughs> biggest issue gone. Let's kick on and let's well, hopefully go see them win some titles because, God damn, this team should have won so many by now if they weren't so ineptly led. Yeah, the crazy thing to me is, like, 
nearly every single time you've ever seen me take an IGL, I think it's like good but underrated. You notice the first thing I do is explain that they don't have the tools to work with. That's why I don't expect miracles from Alexi B when he was in NIP or when he was in that OG lineup where he didn't even have some of the good players. He just had some whatever play. In those teams, I, obviously I don't expect you to win the tournament. How could you? Where's your star player? Where's your top 20 player? Everyone else has two or three and you have zero and then you're looking at your support developments and they're just like okay play. You'd have to be like be, be glaive times one million in 2018 to ever do anything in that team you'd actually have to like cheat essentially to win the game the problem with Nafani is this I don't know if I've ever seen a more egregious example of an in-game leader who certainly appears to have had control over the team who had two play he was coming last place in tournaments and yet two of his players on paper and did the eye test just looked like top 10 players in the world. Simultaneous to that. And then I'll just throw this in there. Yeah, you could maybe have a top 10 player, but you know, the role's wrong. Oh no, they're also primary rifler and sniper. Like, essentially, if you have those two players and they're top 10 in the world, and you're an IGL who doesn't just sit back and go, do whatever you like, lads, then you're a terrible IGL. Like, it's closest I can come without being in the team to saying that, like, objectively. Like, if I set up every metric without even putting these players in, and then I looked at Cloud9, it would say 99.99% Nafani is the problem. Now, there might have been other problems, too. I think it's very rarely one player, even the IGL, if you're doing that badly. But that's the joke, because they've actually removed the players you'd want to. Now, the funny thing is, I actually do think Inter's died for nothing. But the joke is, in the in a circuitous route, you've actually in a fucked up way. It's almost like that time, I wouldn't know this reference, the Lakers managed to like flip Andrew Bynum into Dwight Howard, which is like, well, you've just went to a better place. How, how do you do that? Like, essentially, you've gone from Inter's via Buster into the even better version of Inter's, who's also <laughs> won a major and can actually like carry series. Like, that's actually, suddenly, all of a sudden, all that time of, like, flaming cloud now, now he's starting to think, like, maybe there's some thinkers over there. This is a fire pickup. And obviously, look, they've done it as Cloud9 did as an org opportunistically because if you look at the flags of the players leaving the Navi players and what team they're joining, I don't think there's a coincidence there. But I'll tell you what, you, you make here when the sun's out. It's a perfect time to pick up and make, like, a... a Hobbit aside, a Russian super team. Of Not only that, you haven't even gone for the up-and-coming talents. You're not someone gambling that Patsy becomes awesome or that wonderful makes it. You've got them already. All four of the Russian players have straight fire. Straight fire. Two of them have won majors. Two of them just are the best players in the world. And then you've got the whole equation of like, Hobbit it just has to be the vet in this team. There's the other thing people are forgetting. When Electronic joins this team, Hobbit doesn't even have to do any of that shit from back in Gambit. He never has to be even the third best player again. He can become himself a supportive element if he wants. He can do whatever. Phil, essentially, is your job at this point, Hobbit, because the others are going to be so good. What's it a hate? So to me, the Nefardi one, it had to happen. Also, spoiler, I don't think it's a coincidence that the original news was that Nafani stays and that they cut in Hobbit then bizarrely Nafani goes mad on Maui on Twitter and then himself <laughs> days later gets caught I'm not saying that that's what get him got I essentially think he already probably knew he was on the outs and what he thought would be the most logical thing to think is wait a minute why do people think I suck though because no player ever believes it's their fault by the way the first thing you're going to think is well this guy like let a campaign against me and it's because he's hey bro stop saying things like it's just obvious as to why that would set him off it's like the same reason why I know I give simple a tiny pass for when he went mad at me because if you look his entire life essentially tumbled around him right after that so I imagine he was just on the edge and that was the straw that broke the camel's back so to me it's a great move the only issue is obviously electronic IGL right the joke in this team is electronic doesn't need to be old electronic even if the IGLs like you've got Axile like that's the problem in Navi is you needed him to both be a good IGL and be electronic and he couldn't do both and then I'll throw this in there that I'm with you if Groove fills with this lineup you just replace him but the reason why I might keep him and the reason why I don't hate the idea of trying electronic IGL although I would still just have done the gone full big balls and get Jerry as well and say fuck it and just do a real super team but the reason why I don't hate it is because I just know from talking to Blade for many hours off camera and on camera he is a very very particular thinker about the game I mean I always tell people this he was actually around in the early 2000s like he didn't like learn CS from someone else who learned it from there like the joke is he was like the one at the beginning he was like the guy who went like 
I'm going to call that animal a giraffe. Like, that was him. Like, he, he did that. He didn't, like, learn about giraffes in a book <laughs> later. Like, so as a result, you can imagine, he has a totally different way of thinking about certain things in the game. And so the problem is, I always thought the electronic problem was, you're not only being asked to be an IGL, you're being asked to be, a, like, a field general of a guy who has his whole school of thinking about the game. And just because you fragged under him in Flipside and Navi doesn't mean you know all the intricacies of how he wants you to call. And everyone's seen, Navi does go for the perfect still. They want to be CIS fucking. Astralis and go super slow and punish every pick and force every piece of utility. And I think that is terrible when you're a former entry fragger who's the new IGL. In this team, I'm going to guess they won't try that style. I'm going to guess they'll do something different with Electric. Maybe he even gets some free reign how he wants to go. So it even could be a better IGL calling from him, quite frankly. And let's be real, his pieces in this team are better than they were in Na'Vi because he got sort of the whack Na'Vi with MPL, didn't he? He's actually got some fucking banging pieces right out the gate. Like, I think he's got a very good chance to at least find his foot in so I think that's mega and if you notice I've left Perfecto till the end because I think this is the most slam dunk pickup I've seen in fucking years I think Navi for real look I do think the international angle is interesting that's going to be one of our points soon but I think it is mentally let a guy like this go I could even see a letting electronic go because of certain things with his family in the past and all that but the thing with the Perfecto one is as far as I know Perfecto never put a foot wrong in the game outside of the game and was like we're talking about here OP as fuck relative to the role he plays. Dude, I've even seen this guy top frag from the positions he's in. The guy is just a fucking stud. Like, I've always told people, being as old Zipnix is just dead with a fucking two suitcases full of money in the Danish desert somewhere, as the joke would go. Perfecto is the new fucking Zipnix, you idiots. He actually does that role amazingly and frags and, like, wins games for you. Like, he is what your old Zipnix was that everyone revered. So, I don't think he even gets his credit, mate. Maybe because Na'Vi had all these problems and people thought he was getting flamed and all that. So, I, I think this is a brilliant set of moves. And I really do think this lineup now, even withstanding the issues of, like, what about electronic IGL? How will they fit together and hop it? I don't care. This just looks on paper like it should immediately become top five in the world. Like, I could even see a world where they just do, like, a honeymoon run and just fucking tear up the first tournament yeah. and start wrecking people. Like, I'm actually really excited for this one. It's a really great set of moves in the end. Because I was also worried, like we were talking earlier, I was worried that they were just going to keep Nafani and then it would be like, we would figure out it was his problem, but after yet yeah. another set of players mm. that might buy you another six months of some bullshit. I think it's the perfect time for this move. I would have been so disappointed if it were just Nafani for Hobbit, just because then we know that the calling style is still <clears throat> still the problem there. Like, I mean, the thing with the whole like style and what Nafani's doing, it I, I think I think that it the reason I wouldn't even really give Groove a pass though is because so many times I've heard like when when I go at Nafani as hard as I do, people have always kind of tried to come it back at me. But it's like, but Groove's the one that's like helping create the system. And it's like, well, yeah, throw them both out then. Like I don't I don't want to see either of them touch this roster <clears throat> and ruin it in some other way where they think like the style of just like I I felt it was so antiquated so instantaneously. Like people literally figured it out and they're just like, okay, just op against them. Just op. Like it's not hard to beat this this seat this T side. Um, no, I just honestly though, if if this I would I would be shocked if this team doesn't win a tournament in the first six months. I would be shocked just just with that firepower. I will also say as well. <laughs> The one area you did ruin Nafani is just spelling his name that way. Because if you saw, I did it again on Twitter. I tried to think, well, you know what? I am the historian. So I thought, you know what? I'll make a good point. Gambit were amazing online, to be fair. We can't really know if he was making the calls then. Obviously, some people speculate it was Groove. So I tried to give him credit. And I did say, like, online, unironically, they were one of the best teams I've ever seen play Counter-Strike. But then I wrote his name as Nafani with a PH. Because yeah. even, even though I was trying to say <laughs> Nafani and so... And then I only noticed, like, six hours later when, you know, I had, like, 30k views or something and I was like, nah, there's no point changing it now, isn't it? It's like, he just can't catch a break. That just wasn't his week, man. It wasn't you're, his week, man. You're not the only person. I've seen a couple PH spellings, actually. <laughs> like, people people really think that it is spelled like Nafoni. But uh, yeah, no, that's probably my greatest contribution. And Cloud9 will be thanking me. And they would have they would have actually, what they should be doing is actually retroactively thanking me. They should have they should have actually done this a long time ago. Because look at what this roster has done with them not even making the most recent major. Like, that's just, that's just terrible. That's just so awful. Like... Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's why people get mad at Hooksy too, I'd say. And I'll just throw this out there, because I've said it the whole time, it's just it never properly happened because they only won that Dallas event. 
the second they actually, for real, tournament on tournament are in like semis and finals, I don't give a fuck that zero people in the team are from North America. They will have so many fans. Yeah. It is ridiculous. Because people at this point, say, well, liquid, people just want to win a mate. We'll worry about the nationality after that. Like, that's like, that's a luxury item. Like, let's just have a team that we can support that wins. That's what I think people want. So I think they'll be very well received. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't. Thank <laughs> you.